Hello viewers and welcome back to uh, Wargame Red Dragon. I'm your host Pipichu Chu once again. And today we're just taking a look at a massive uh, sized naval and ground battle. Um, this is a 4v4 map too, it's not even one of the 10v10s and it's a it's a match that will go on for 40,000 uh, points. It's a destruction game mode so you had to blow up 40,000 um, points worth of units and namely it's played uh, with this huge ground, um, or rather map just in general, where um, each and every side sort of starts off with their own little continent. You had to blitz the uh, the naval spawn zones and it's just an absolute uh, massive battle just in general here. So with that sort of said, I mean the game begins um, with only ground forces. I'm moving up my troops here and I'm playing with my uh, China Rising deck. Right now I see my opponent and I see him amassing a few planes here and there. There's a lot of aircraft going on action going on in general there's a lot of um aircraft in the air so i'm currently deploying my air forces right now and yeah with this 3000 points with like practically 3000 points in reserve there's so many uh, different things going on here um evidently everybody in the match is currently going for these helicopter decks so i'm going to deploy my air force and with this uh china rising decks is uh, air force what i've essentially done with it is that i've made it so that it it features very heavily on light bombers um ones that can also take out helicopters so this will actually be a great little run here i see that he's deploying some false maker troops over here so i'll get my planes to drop a few bombs to try to take that place out um but also just try to brawl with the guy over here just in general so ooh, we scored a good kill on one 1000 point unit so yeah that was nice and yeah the battle pretty much develops so um in the meantime our teammates um should be capping a lot of locations this map is actually really rather focused on the central uh zone here of elena and fedor i was originally planning to um use my like the chinese uh long range atgm launchers to sort of hold down the bridges here in fedor through this little um complex right here but i think seeing as how we were making these heavy plays i'm actually going to move my troops forward and i'll try to actually cap um, the zones inside Elena, so we'll try to do some some plays inside that area. Um, I have a few naval units to show you guys. Uh, so far, um, just a little bit of a disclaimer, the naval uh, gameplay, it unfortunately, it is really favoring Pact at the moment, just due to the fact that uh, on the seas, what we're seeing is that a, a lot of it is uh, based upon the use of those AT, um, or they're not necessarily ATGM launchers, they're ship-to-ship -ship missiles, and the general premise of them is that you either use some of these ones, like the Komars, that essentially have these like little bomb missiles that have low accuracy but they cause an uh, enormous amount of damage to ships or you use really really long range missiles my guys are taking some damage evidently it looks like they're running into some trouble um because there are some troops over here and we'll get rid of them in just a second but you either use these long range missiles or either you use uh torpedo like short range missiles and you'll see here that my uh, my ally has some of these bnds right here and these are actually able to uh, go amphibious which are kind of cool and yeah, pretty much the game develops just sort of through through um, this sort of dual premise where you have a naval battle going on and you have a land battle going on at the same time. But the naval battle, yeah, it devolves into this missile fight, which I'm not particularly a fan of. Um, but apart from that, uh, one of the problems is that currently with the naval stuff, if you say if you don't have any any any. Um, ships left you actually won't be able to well do very much um seeing as how you only uh, only select troops are actually able to fight on the seas um or rather versus uh, boats just sort of in general so that is uh, one little problem that they sort of have with that um system right now i need some more infantry so i'm gonna buy call some of those in and i see those tow launchers over there which i want to get rid of in this deck, I have some of these cheap, uh, cheapo little SU-100s. They, they're not necessarily great tanks, but they're really rather cheap. Um, they're only 15 points apiece, meaning that um, if they really take out anything, they uh, they pretty much pay for themselves at that point. I'm just going to drop some bombs on them. Oh, it's actually going to be many bombs, so it's not going to be that terribly bad. Hmm. What matters is that I want to get rid of those uh, tow launchers because I have a few of these ZDF uh, vehicles and I just essentially bought everything inside these um, big 
big uh, four pack stacks because the game started off with so many uh, resource points. But anyhow, these ZDFs are the um, are the Chinese little ATGM launchers that have a practically a, a three kilometer range, making them really rather handy. And I think I'll just bring those guys up to um, hopefully put down some fire upon the enemy. Oh, there's spam over here. I have my planes on hotkeys, so I'll send them out. And in general, one thing about the planes inside uh, this China Rising deck is that it's so multi-purpose and useful. Looks like I left TeamSpeak on. Oh well, that's not a big problem. Yeah, I'm recording a video. Yeah, so I have some of these um, SU-275s, and they're absolutely great because they have these really rather ra um, rather lot accurate vampful missiles they go up to seven kms and with two of them assuming that two of them hit it'll actually take down one plane um, and as you saw there i believe we managed to nick one which is pretty good so um it looks like my boats are have arrived i have some of these uh tarantils and these guys are fat these guys are really rather long range uh, missile launching craft. They have radar guided missiles that hit up to 10 kilometers away. Um, they have decent CWS, meaning that they can shoot down enemy missiles with their Strela 2s, uh, making them really, really useful harasser units. And I'll just sort of um, give them an attack order to uh, hopefully bring down a few boats. And um, the boat combat currently is mainly focused upon these missiles. So missile streams come in, they either hit, looks like we got that boat, so that is good. Um, usually though, when the enemy has uh, massive swarms of boats, the uh, the missiles won't actually hit because there's just too much um, stuff flat, uh, so too much stuff just sort of being thrown about. I'm gonna bring up some um, some supply vessels because these things run out of missiles really rather fast. Though if you have enough of these um, these boats, they'll actually be able to overwhelm missile systems like that, and it'll give you oh three kills right there, 600 points worth of stuff. So um, really rather deadly on the seas. Um, for this battle, I was under the impression that I would have been using a lot more, uh, say, naval stuff, so I didn't buy too many land units, which is a decision that I regret. Um, my ZDF here picked off one unit, which is rather good, and unfortunately, I just can't manage both sides at once. Um, one of the other units that I wanted to show you guys are these Schmels, and these Schmels are 50 point, um, little, they're, they're supposed to be river boats too, which is rather interesting. The, uh, the unique thing about them is that they can actually fire off a barrage of the, of these little, um, MRLS barrages from the sea, making them rather handy, uh, just in that premise. And it looks like they managed to get one of my Tarantils, which aren't as costing as their ships are, oddly enough. So that is good enough. I'm gonna pull my ships back, evidently we run out, we have run out of missiles. And um, looks like we're actually doing a good job keeping their missiles off of us though. I'm gonna move my Schmels up forwards because uh, as soon as we can locate some targets with uh, some of our infantry or whatnot here, we should actually be able to just sort of uh, unleash this devastating MRLS barrage from the seas. Um, so far they don't have too many of these river boats inside the game. I'm trying to figure out where my units are taking damage right now. But the um, the pack player seems to have some of these great long range artillery boats. Uh, whereas the NATO player seems to have some of these great, uh, great little boats that do a terrific amount of damage. Um, that have uh, Hellfire ATGM missiles on them. So, they're, so it's sort of a nice um, comparison here and there. Now... Hmm. Yeah, they're trying to bring in some of their ship-to-ship uh, -ship missile planes to try to do some damage to us. I'm actually going to deploy my planes to try to um, try to harass them. He's going to pull them back, so we'll pull back our planes. Uh, and perfect. Looks like our infantry have found some targets. Found some Canadian airborne here and some uh, fusiliers. So that should actually be a good target for my schmills to uh, just sort of unleash hell onto this area. And they have a decently long range. They're not that accurate, unfortunately. But what we want to do here is that we just want to throw down a large barrage and see really what we can do uh, with them. So they'll fire in a second here. There we go. Yeah, and these things are incredibly useful because for, for some of these um, amphibious maps where it's land and sea, they have great controllability uh, from the seas, especially because um, on select maps, they have uh, they have one map which is just effectively filled with canals, and these schmels are just really rather useful in that they can get into those canals and really just range anywhere around the map with their uh, barrages like such. 
So that's going to lay down a lot of suppression, enough that uh, we can get our troops into these buildings, and I'll give my SU to um, cover this little push right here. Uh, but I think in the meantime, a lot of the focus is going to go back to um, use to, uh, to this naval clash right here. So, um, again, I mean, the naval battles are primarily just sort of these uh, ATGM standoff fights. They're going to get a few planes over here. Our guys are going to intercept all of those missiles. And pretty much the fighting continues just like that. Evidently, they have a lot of troops over here inside this little camp. I think what I'll do is that I'll bring in some more recon infantry to replace the ones that I have lost. And I think I'll actually bring in some uh, specialist elite uh, Li Jian infantry to clear that area up. I think um, a good two of them will be enough. Right, so um, our supply boats are here, so I'll resupply our guys, and I suppose we'll resupply his boats too. Um, these boats, they they seem to require an absolute ton of supplies. These uh, these little Muna vessels, they um, they actually carry about 1.5 FOBs worth of uh, of supplies, or more so, just one. My mistake. Yeah, they, they carry a lot of supplies, and I'm actually rather interested in seeing how how your naval boats can supply land uh, units as well. Um, so far, what I'm noticing is that, I mean, nobody, people don't seem to use these boats as uh, ground supply vehicles, just due to the fact that the boat combat is pretty uh, resource intensive. But I mean, what happens if you run out of supplies for your boats is one thing that I'm wondering um, about. They're actually bringing their boats in to, uh, to do a little attack run, so that's rather interesting. And they're bringing in a swarm of fighters to actually do some damage over here. I hope my planes can actually get into this, intercept them a little bit. Ah, they've managed to uh, take out one of my boats. Or no, one of my boats and my supply vessel. Hopefully I can nab this intruder plane. Yep, there we go. Caught one of his planes, and that was a fairly expensive plane. But those boats were also fairly expensive too. Um, so far, I mean, we're in the lead by quite a little bit here on the boats scene. See whether or not I can barrage that, uh, that lone capital ship out there, the Hatsunki, whatever it is, to death with um, some of these radar-guided P-270 rockets. It's going to be just absolutely glorious. Huge, huge barrage of rockets right there. And yeah, I mean, pretty much the naval combat just sort of continues like that. See whether or not we can get a few of these um, ATGMs to actually um, get into their group of ships. Yeah, unfortunately, what kind of happens is that sometimes people will just have way too many, uh, too many ships at one place that you really have to just overload the enemies' is, um, systems to do any real damage. They're actually going to try to hit us with some artillery, which evidently is working. I'm going to get my Tarantils with their highly accurate missiles to focus on their capital ships, and these are the ones that I can actually cap zones. So if I fire them in barrages, they'll get in through their uh, their Don Haze, which have some of these like little Beaufort cannons. My understanding of this is that so long as um, the boats have some sort of AA gun, they'll actually be able to shoot down um, some any type of... Uh, any type of missiles coming at them. Now, my infantry should have arrived, and I'll deploy them. I want to get a. I want to take a look at that town once again. I'll actually get my Li Jian troopers step outside of their little boat in their um, WZ carriers, and these things are incredibly de uh, deadly towards ground infantry and aircraft. And I'll get them to uh, make a push here. Oh, whoops! That's not the squad. That one is. And we'll check out that area inside Elena again. Now, in the meantime, I still have a lot of these Tarantils, and as you can see, these Munas, they drain incredibly fast. And namely, you actually don't have very many of them. I only have four of them reserved, so we'll bring some more of them. And you, you can't really supply them once again, so it's it's rather, uh, they're rather finicky. And what I want to do here is that he's launching, my, my ally here, Mad... Matsef. He looks like he's launching just sort of a suicide attack with these Komars. They're, they have really high damage, but not very high accuracy. They're, they're like flying torpedoes, in my opinion. Um, but they're going to do some damage. What I'm going to do here is that I want my Tarantils with their... I, you know, I believe these Tarantils actually... 
have the the highest um, range for for these missiles, um, and they have the highest accuracy from the looks of it as well. It's seventy percent accuracy. They can fire on the move too very easily. They don't necessarily do too much damage though. But what I want to do with them is I, I want to bank them in here and I want to take out all the capital ships like those Type Twenty Ones. Um, oddly enough, I mean, maybe I'm using the term wrong, maybe these ones aren't capital ships, they might just be command ships in, in the sense that they, they have that little star there. And he's gonna bank his bomber in here, he's gonna try to take out my infantry. And it's actually gonna be a pretty accurate napalm drop over here. Hmm. It's a Stormer uh, HVM right there, he's actually bringing in more his planes then he probably should so I'll actually get my air force to deal with it let's just see what we can do here it looks like we managed to pick off one of those type 27 or one of these uh, type 21s just judging by the slowly sinking wreck um, but unfortunately these ships really they, 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 they don't have a lot of missiles so I think we'll pull back here um, let's see what other uh, things we can do in the meantime now I really want to take out this village but unfortunately it is just a major hassle bring some supply trucks over here um, they have that stormer watching it and this is a yeah it's a dual anti-ground anti-air uh, craft little ATGM missile launcher the unique thing about it is that it, it, it actually has pretty high ranges for both helicopters and um, ground vehicles so we'll probably need a ground ATGM team to take it out I actually don't have any of those ground ATGM teams but um, I'll bring in some more troops to sort of uh, facilitate this attack I suppose and my aircraft I'll just call I'll just send them back so yeah I mean with the naval combat it, um, it, it it's rough right now but I suppose it, it's it's definitely workable um, with my schmelz I can try for another barrage but I mean these things uh, they are more so more so suited for taking out long gaps of land I'm actually gonna see how close I need to get to the opponent um, to make it into like one of these shorter barrages and it looks like I need to enter a good radius. I think, um, I think, I think I'll actually be able to hide my craft behind that area, by that little island inside Boris. Right now I'm a little worried about this, um, arrow spam. And yeah, what these barrages are playing is they can, they can typically take out one boat just, uh, as a run in general, just due to the fact that, I mean, they're just so many planes and so many missiles being launched off you just can't get rid of them in time i'm um, i'm actually going to call in my jh7s and my uh, my jh or j j7c's here and I, i'm going to use them for um anti-air purposes they have decently accurate and decently ranged um weapons to take out these cobras the nice thing about these planes is that while they carry bombs and i primarily use them for bombs they have um a decently strong 20 mil 23 millimeter cannon on the front and i mean of course you can use them for these um anti-helicopter rolls and the thing is that i mean the helicopters they're not necessarily more expensive than these planes because these planes are roughly uh 70 points each 70 80 points each Hopefully they can bail out, but if they die, I'm actually not too worried about it because if we if we actually are able to get into this blob of um, of sea vessels, it's actually more expensive than pra practically anything else. All right, it looks like uh, well that match was a fairly short one, so I mean that's fairly good. Um, it looks like yeah the enemy team pretty much just left, and well we ended off with a uh, 3.5 thousand point or 3.5 thousand yeah points, and we lost about. 1,100, so I mean, that's pretty good. So, I'll, um, I'll see you guys later on. I suppose we'll play some more, check out the naval battles some more, and uh, really just go from there.